I invite us all now to enter into a time of reflection and worship as I ring our chime. Welcome to both congregations. It just feels good to welcome in the year 2022 together. The two congregations, when COVID all got started, we had our services together for over a year. But then last July, we were blessed to go back and to have the chance to worship in our own sanctuaries. We've done one other joint service, but with the current spike in COVID, we decided at least for today to do a joint service and Chestertown's reopening team has already met and they will be doing online for January and Easton's team is meeting this afternoon and, and will make its own assessments. So just know that we really would, of course, prefer to be in person if we could. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Um, but for right now, given the full hospitals and everything else, this is how we are going to welcome in the new year. So there's churn. There has been churn, but yet we are here. Week after week, we have figured out ways to gather, to explore our values, to explore ethics, to consider life's mysteries. We gather to take care of one another. And we can't take care of one another if we haven't gotten to know each other, if we haven't had the experience both of being together in a group and of being together online or in whatever form it takes. If you are new to Unitarian Universalism or haven't experienced one either of our congregations, we invite you to ask questions. You can check online, you can see who our officers are in the, the congregations, and you can always ask me a question. So before I move on, Nancy Holland is blessing us with the chalice lighting today. For folks new to Unitarian Universalism, it's often how we gather. I do want to just check to see if from a tech perspective, everything is okay. And again, you might want to be on speaker view um, as you go through with the service. Any tech questions so far? Okay, Nancy, if you could offer our chalice lighting words, that would be wonderful. And I'm gonna step away to light our chalice in the sanctuary. May the light we now kindle and the time we share together anchor us to that inner flame, that sacred center, which helps us remember who we were before the world told us who it wanted us to be. May our time together clear the way for those memories that help lead us back home. And I have a small, a smaller chalice here that I will also let. Thank you, Nancy.
One of the special parts of having Zoom services is we can do hymns a little differently. So thank you, Ellen, for that music. Today, we are going to explore what we mean when we say we want to live an intentional life. And so we're going to offer open our service today with some intentional centering. I invite you into a time of reflection. Spirit of life, spirit of love, we come together to open this new year. We come with our hopes. It's what we do as people. We come surrounded by the scenes of early January. Turns out a very warm January branches that are bare, that allow us to see in unique ways. We have a greater sense of wildlife, what the woods is like, of what cities are like on quiet days. We start with all of this in our hearts. And we come to the new year with these images we come to with our concerns, our uncertainties. Hopefully today we come together with some honesty. Maybe we can name what it is we really want in this new year. What it is that we might create together. It's that broader picture we create together. That is our reason, our reason for this gathering. Spirit of life, through it all, may we trust in the greater power of love to guide us. May we find a path that is guided by hope and guided by vision. May it be an intentional and wonderful year. Amen and blessed be. One of the ways that we do build this community, and we have done this in one form or another each week for years, for decades, is to share joys and concerns. It's, it's a way of letting folks know not only what's going on in our own lives, but a reminder of the broad dimensions in life. So I'm going to go ahead um, and I will light three candles. I'm actually going to go ahead and share what they're for. And then I will light those candles. And then I will um, ask our co-hosts to open it up. And as folks read out their joy and concern, briefly share something that's been significant in your life, a milestone, um, a place of struggle, a place of loss or a place of joy, we will, um, I will go ahead and light those candles. The first candle I light, it still feels important to light a, a candle acknowledging the pandemic, acknowledging the frontline workers, acknowledging the personal loss of family and friends from COVID, Acknowledging the stress of continually having to adapt. An important candle. I light a candle for some of the public losses that have happened over the last couple of weeks. It feels like there have been a lot and not to single out just a few folks but to recognize what it means for each of us when a public figure is no longer 
walking on this side. Leaders Desmond Tutu, Senator Harry Reid, Betty White, one, three of many names that remind us that life is temporary and that remind us, remind us that we can make a big difference. Light a final candle for all that remains in our hearts. And we offer now Spirit of Life by Philip Dutton. I invite now Emily Cranwell to do our reading for this morning. Thank you. Our reading this morning is Even This Is Enough by Reverend Vanessa Southern. So much undone, so much to do, so much to heal in us and the world so much to acquire a meal a healthy body a fit one a lover a job a better job proof we have and are enough just around the corner of now and up against it the reality of all that falls short and the limits of today we honor the limits if your body won't do what it used to, for right now, let it be enough. If your mind won't stop racing or can't think of the word, let it be enough. If you are here utterly alone and in despair, be all that here with us. If today you cannot sing because your throat hurts or you don't have the heart for music, be silent. When the offering plate goes around, if you don't have money to give or the heart to give, let it pass. The world won't stop spinning on her axis. 
If you don't rise to all occasions today, love won't cease to flow in your direction. Your heart won't stop beating. All hope won't be lost. You are part of the plan for this world's salvation. Of that, I have no doubt. The world needs its oceans of people striving to be good, to carry us to the shores of hope and wash fear from the beachheads and cleanse all wounds so they can heal. But oceans are big and I am sure there are parts that don't feel up to the task of the whole some days. Rest if you must, then like the swimmer lying on her back who floats or the hawk carried on cushions of air, rest in pews made to hold weary lives in space carved out for the doing of nothing much but being. Perhaps then you will feel in your bones, in your weary heart, the aching, healing sense that this is enough, even this, that we are enough, you are enough, enough. Thank you, Emily. And now we have a little more music as we settle in. This was a um, hymn recorded early in COVID times called Find a Stillness by the UUFE Choir.
So as we start the new year, as we just look back just on the really recent times, where has your energy been focused of late? Has it been on all the day-to-day -day stuff, the appointments, the car repairs, groceries and cooking? Maybe your attention's been drawn to planning and planning and then replanning things again. Maybe there have been some larger matters that have needed your attention. Maybe you're into some projects or family events. So where's your energy been pulled is one of our questions. And another is where has your heart been pulled of late? There have been places of pain, places of struggle. Maybe there have been moments of delight, surprises that you just didn't anticipate over the holiday. We heard during joys and sorrows of family gatherings that just hadn't happened for a while, and yet they did this year. And there are those places of amazement, just the beauty all around us. Where has your heart been pulled? As we start the year, one more question. What feels important to you? What feels overarchingly important to you right now? Way back in the early 1800s, a very famous Unitarian, Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, a person will worship something, have no doubt about that. We may think our tribute is paid in secret in the deep, dark recesses of our hearts, but it will out. That with, which dominates our imaginations and our thoughts, that will determine our lives and our character. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are becoming. I think Emerson reminds us of that churn that is inside of us, what is swirling around for all of us. And all of that swirl, all of that swirl guides us, whether we want it to or not. What's going on inside impacts who we are on the outside. And such a swirl it is. Such a swirl it is. That there are so many forces that pull us in so many directions, even if we are just so determined we're not going to let that happen. There are those lists that circle in our hearts and minds. So for, for now, just for the next 15 minutes or so, I invite you to take that swirl. Take that swirl, whatever it is, and gently lay it down. Go put it in a corner, at least for a bit. Maybe you need to place your swirl in a few orderly piles so you don't feel like you're going to lose them. But for now, we clear a workspace, just as we might do before we bake or before we wrap gifts. And I, I, I see the images of John Ramsey in, in, in a workshop, and I know his wife is an artist. So for now, just picture we have a blank canvas. Let's pause before we start immediately just filling it in. I think one of the places we go, one of the, the things we do, one option is to start filling it in with what we think we should do. We ponder how to use our time more wisely and how to set really clear priorities so that we won't be focused on things that don't matter to us, things that aren't that important. We aim towards some sort of benchmarks of what we think it means to be a good person, an accomplished person, a better person. And likely, you sometimes go, where do, we, where do we come up with all these benchmarks we keep setting? I think there's some layers here. And I think many of them were probably values that were given to us early in our lives. Maybe to be kind or generous or dutiful, resourceful, responsible. No matter what you think you've jettisoned over the years, something comes forward from those early years. But I think beyond what's in our own hearts and, and, and that layers on over time, we have those benchmarks that are set by the world. 
definitions of what it means to lead a full and satisfying life. We get those images. No matter what you do to turn off the catalogs, they still come in the mail. There's social media, there is TV. We are just pounded by ideas of how we should look and how our, what our homes should have and which appliances we should have, what we should read, what we should watch, what would make us a cooler person. So maybe we set goals and there's nothing wrong at all with setting goals. Maybe it's the number of times we wanna exercise or number of books we wanna read or debt we wanna get paid off. And then there's those piles we want to clean up off our desk. Or maybe the goals that you're thinking of are a little bit more subtle, that we want to strive to be more patient, strive to be more generous. I think implicit in all of this goal setting is something that's whispering in our ear that we want to be just a little bit better at this time next year than we are today. Maybe not all the time, but it may be part of it. We want to contribute to making the world a better place. And if a goal setter, and if you are a goal setter, you are, you know, in all this work that you're doing, whatever it is that you do, you are probably are doing incredibly good things for yourself and heading in production, productive worlds. And as we set these goals and we try and we slip because that's what humans do, it's all okay. So maybe these goals and priorities fit in for your life, for your canvas. But I offer us a little bit of caution. I think sometimes if we try to live into what should be, especially when it's what others have determined for us, what it is we should be, it's tiring. We may judge our progress by the gaps. Often our goals are to, to improve, they're comparative, and they leave us feeling a bit empty. We wonder how others get it all done, and we wonder why we made these commitments that we did. So I offer that as a place that we consider in the canvas. I recently watched a TED Talk by Malika Chopra. She's the author of the book, Living with Intent. And she's also the um, daughter of Deepak Chopra. I think a lot of folks have read his works over the years. He's sort of a new age spiritual writer and philosopher. So Malika is talking in her book. She was about 40 years old at the time and she was in her mid or early 40s. She was a wife, she was the mom of two and she had an entrepreneurial career as author and speaker. She tells of the time when she was gonna to get to interview Eckhart Tolle. He was, he's, he's also famous, he was a contemporary of her father's, her father probably helped her get the interview, she said. And she's told clearly by Eckhart Tolle's advanced staff, you will have 15 minutes only for this interview. So she, she flies up to the location, she gets to the office where she's supposed to be right on time, and the interview starts and she does her thing. She, she gets out her couple minutes of prepared material about her writing project and what's gonna go on. And then way in the background, way outside of the building where they're in some bells start to ring. Tolly's response, let's listen to the bells. And there they sat. Tolly is the author of The Power of Now, and he truly does go with that moment. And Malika is just devastated. Her 15 minutes disappearing as they sit there listening to bells. But then she too said she listened. And she just said, that's what we're going to do. And she said in that interview, something for her shifted. So before we fill our campus, are we aware of whatever it is for us that have been these shifting moments that get us to look with a slightly different perspective? Because I do think we enter 2022, we've had 
a something shifted moment and then another moment and then again and again because pandemics do that the pandemic has not been the only thing going on in our world but it has been big something shifted almost two years ago at lockdown when events that we counted on gatherings ritual travel everything was canceled or adapted and friends and family were lost there were deaths we lit candles and in all those times of loss and being shocked we vowed we would keep the good parts going forward the quieter evenings the cooking at home and two we lived in fear but then something shifted as vaccines rolled out remember starting 21 21 desperately trying to get a vaccine appointment. My son, I remember, found me one 60 miles away in Southern Maryland, the other side of the bridge, way, way down there. And twice I went back to that giant. I had in early February a vaccine appointment. And then we returned in early July to our sanctuaries, to something that was feeling like we were going to start walking in the rhythms that were familiar. But then something shifted again. Delta in late August, and we tweaked our plans, and then Omicron these past weeks. Our patients has been tested. We're tired of making the best of it with plans canceled and anticipating more challenges. I say that in all honesty, because as we look at the canvas, before we start filling it in, how have our ongoing experiences with COVID, how are they going to factor into the coming year? So the book that Malika Chopra ended up writing, the full title of the book is Living with Intent, My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace, and Joy. And she wrote this back in 2015. It was not pandemic writing, yet it does capture her mood what helped her see life with more intent from the disruption of recognizing she was trying to do it all and that wasn't what living intentionally was for her what might we do with our blankish canvas because we are going to have to go over and pick up the swirls that we left at the door and we realistically do need to pick up parts of our piles, our responsibilities. With that reality, what might it be to live in the 22nd month of a pandemic in the year 2022? What if this year we are not intentionally trying to change and fix ourselves or trying to change and fix the world? What if we are more about appreciating who we are now? The skills that we each have right now. What if we took the time to find that stillness, to think about where is our natural contribution to the world? What if we spent as little time as possible trying to be that round peg in the square hole or the square peg in the round hole. What if that was what the year was about? Finding a gentler path of finding a place where we weren't always sort of pushing and worrying. So when Malika Chopra, when she realized that she was teaching a meditation class and as she was teaching this meditation class, all of the lists and her soccer mom duties were swirling in her head, she decided to return to some foundational questions her father had always required she and her brother to ask. They would do family meditations in the morning to try to find that center. The three questions were, or are, in essence, who am I, what do I want, and how can I serve? Some really basic questions. I, I'm not going to answer them each personally, but, but think of the who am I thing, just that simple statements. Maybe it's who am I today. And we ask it as a baseline not to 
fix or to change or to imagine next year, but to notice with gratitude where we are right now or to notice with honesty where we are struggling and to be real about that. Maybe for me, it would be something like, I'm Reverend Sue Browning. I'm the minister of two loving, energetic congregations in, on the Eastern shore of Maryland. I am a minister during a pandemic. I'm married. I have kids, age 23 kids, age 28 to 33, and a daughter-in-law. I am a sibling. This year, I have a Medicare card that I didn't have last year. I love chocolate. I love playing cards. And that might be the who am I? How would you answer that question today? I think the question, what do I want? is an incredibly raw question. What happens if we answer that from our deep gut? It's worth a pause. It's worthy of being somewhat specific and there may be some materialistic things that you want, some material things. In that bigger question, what is it I want right now? To be okay with centering yourself in that question, because that may be the question. If you do what you want, it may bring you alive in the world differently. And how can I serve? I hear this less as looking for some functional role, but an invitation for connection with the world. Where am I going to connect and how is that going to happen? These are questions for everyone at all life's stages because we are all always changing. I think there are also some questions that reveal some basics and they are not easy to answer. There was an author, Marion Milner, and she was writing close to 100 years ago. She did a lot of sort of psychoanalyst type things and she wrote a book, A Life of One's Own, and she's quoted as saying this, People said, oh, be yourself at all costs. But I had found that it was not easy to know just what one's self was. It was far easier to want what other people seemed to want and then imagine the choice was one's own. It was only when I was actively passive and content to wait and watch that I really knew what I wanted actively passive, fascinating phrase. So are we ready to start filling in that canvas? Or do we need to pause even a little bit longer and let those bells ring? Do we have to see if there's been some shift we missed before we can wisely fill in the calendar and move forward with urgency? Do we need to move forward with urgency? Or might we this year? be okay with letting the year unfold more slowly. I think what intentional living, it's our, our theme and our topic this month is, is intentional focus, is what it means is just to be aware and to be careful where it is we focus. We take heed of Emerson's assessment. It behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are becoming. And the term worship here is not necessarily a worship or belief in God type term, but worship can mean what is it that I hold most worthy? Inside of me, what do I think is the most important thing? Because that will be how in part we live out our lives outside. And setting the bar, setting the bar really high, just maybe what your soul needs pour your energy into something and to go deeply into, into it and to be courageous and, and to, be, to take the risk of failure. Maybe it is that marathon you want to train for, the mastery of a new language. Maybe it's a year of setting no bar at all, of leaning into the routines and rituals of each day, of seeing each day as just a blessing and living it well. And it's probably not one or the other. 
the invitation this morning is to see this as active, passive time, actively passive time, and to really be careful to see if that bar that we are setting, we're choosing not to set, is our own authentic direction. The pause is to calibrate that a little bit, to see where love is calling you, to see where, at a collective level, where it's calling us as congregations. Because I think if, we're, if we spend a lot of time when our insides are not lined out with our, inner, our outsides, that's where our energy goes. We spend a huge amount of time trying to make sure that what we present on the outside stays in good shape and that what we have in us sometimes never comes out. So may this be a time when we listen to our hearts as we creatively find our path in this amazingly challenging and confusing time. May it be so, and blessed be for this new year. Our closing hymn, and we do have announcements, we will then have some closing words, but the hymn after the sermon was also created last year during the pandemic, and I think folks will remember this, I believe. You, you have a choir. I believe in the sun. I believe in the sun, even when, even when it's not shining. I believe in the sun. finding the stillness, through our hearing of familiar music, we are figuring out what we might slowly start doing with our canvas. In that spirit, we move into announcements, which will just take a moment and we'll have closing words. I do want to offer, we're going to try something different for coffee hour and we're going to try some breakout rooms for those who would like to participate. 
So after we extinguish the chalice and you hear the sung benediction, hang on and we will see for anyone who'd like to stay, there'll be a chance to meet some folks in some slightly smaller groups. Um, so do we have announcements from Easton? Was someone assigned announcements? I'm trying to remember. Um, I will offer one thing um, for both congregations. The, um, I did, didn't mention the donate button is on the front screens. Feel free to contribute that way or through your normal pledges. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Easton will have its reopening team meeting today. So follow the um, announcements in the newsletter um, so that you'll know the plans for next week's service. I'm definitely preaching, it's a question of, of format. And um, Chestertown, any announcements? Um, and the, the one activity I know about is, if you hadn't seen the small group announcements, um, there is a joint Easton Chestertown small group ministry group forming. It's gonna meet Wednesday evenings, starting in mid-January. There's still a few more slots. And it is a great chance to have um, an experience where you get to really know some people, have some conversations about matters and have some fun together. So it's, it's creating a small group that will meet for this winter and early spring. So I offer now our closing words. These are written by Reverend Scott Taylor. May we dare to live from the center of our being May we make our own choices before others make choices for us. May the fire that burns in our belly light our way. And may our collective intention make the world shine anew. Go in peace. Go in love. Go knowing love surrounds you wherever you may go. We extinguish our chalice with these words and we hear our final benediction song from Philip Dutton.